Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to show you another example why you want to use Node-RED on your iHost to control something. And in today's example I want to use two temperature sensors. Um, well, for here I'm going to use these two Zigbee temperature sensors, but you can use any of the Sonoff temperature sensors. And I want to build an automation, I want to build a logic when um, something is getting turned on or off based on the difference between these temperatures. So let's say you have a greenhouse uh, that you want to ventilate and then you want to turn this uh, fan or the ventilation on and off based on the difference between the inside temperature and the outside temperature. And if you want to build a scene in, um, you know, in the iHost, then the problem is that in the if statement, you can't, I mean, you can uh, look at a device, for example, you can look at the temperature sensor, uh, which is, yeah, which is here, but you, you know, you, you, you can create a, a, like a threshold value if something is smaller or bigger, but you can't really uh, create a, a formula where you would take like two readings and then subtract them together. And for this, we have to use Node-RED. And the way I build this uh, automation, which is fairly similar to the one that I've done previously, is that you can see that I have the two temperature reading here or the two temperature sensor. And I've created a, um, a, a switch, which is a virtual switch. So it's not something that exists in the, uh, as a device in the Sonoff. So this is how I've created from Node-RED. And Node-RED is going to switch this uh, switch on and off based on if the temperature difference is greater or lower than you know the defined uh, threshold and uh, the reason i've done that because then now you can create an automation to say that let's say if my smart device which is the well i just called it fan switch but you can give it a different name as well so where is this uh, so if my fan switch is on then I want to turn something on as well. Or if my fan switch turns off, I want to turn off something as, yeah, as well. And the reason I've done this with this extra switch, because then um, you have a scene here on the iHost that you can easily modify, you can disable it, you can enable it, and then you can just leave the Node-RED function as it is. So it's always a, you know, a contained function. You don't have to change it. You can rather modify the logic in the scenes. But of course, you can modify the node red flow so it does, you know, it switches your fan or whatever device directly as well. It, it doesn't really matter. And as usual, if you are interested in this node red flow, I'm going to have a link in the video description where you can download it. But it should be fairly simple, so maybe it's better if you just build it on your own based on my video so you can understand how it works. Okay, so I think let's look at the actual flow and um, I'm going to show you the Node-RED side of it. So this is the Node-RED flow, which we are going to talk about. And first of all, I want to quickly um, explain you how this flow works. So uh, first we are going to create this virtual switch that I was talking about. So that's the first part of the flow. And then we are going to create also a hysteresis value. Uh, this is just a value that I'm going to add or subtract to the uh, to one of the temperatures. So we only start switching when there is a difference. Let's say if there is a one degree difference, because otherwise, if you just uh, you know compare the two temperatures together, if it's something is smaller or or uh, you know higher or or less, or so more or less, then it might here create a lot of switching, like a lot of on and off switching. But if you add this uh, sort of hysteresis or this delta value, then uh, well, I think your fan is going to work more naturally. So it only, you know, turns on if there, let's say if there is a couple of degrees of difference, otherwise it would just not do anything. So that's just the value that we are going to set in the beginning. And then we are going to read to do the two temperature sensors and we are going to store this value. And then every time we have either um, an update to the inside or the outside temperature, we are going to do our calculation. So we will uh, decide, well, first of all, we are going to check if the fan is already on. And if the fan is on, we are going to check if this is you know too warm outside. So we need to turn off the fan or if the fan is off, we 
are going to check if it's uh, too warm inside so then the fan needs to be turned on so we just turn the fan on and off and whenever we turn the fan off we also get the the actual uh, fan state back that also we are going to use here and in this flow i wanted to use uh, some you know very basic nodes i don't i didn't want to write any um, javascript code in a function node so probably it's going to be easier for you to understand and then you know just change the way it works just to better suit your needs and you know fine tune to your requirements and before we start i just want to mention that if you have installed uh, um, Node-RED and the, you know, the iHost or the uh, Evilink Cube in a past, there has been a version update and uh, this version update is needed because some of the temperature sensors were not supported in the earlier version. So I think he, the earlier version was 1.0.1, .1, so now we have 1.1 and hopefully in the future there are going to be higher versions. So just make sure that you do update it before you start working on this one. And of course I have a whole separate video how you install Node-RED and these components on the iHost. So if you don't know how to do that, you should watch that video first, which is going to be in the video description. Let's look at how the flow works in the detail. So first we have an inject node which executes on startup and that's going to create our new fan switch and here all you have to do is you have to give it a name so you can just rename it to I don't know fan or ventilation trigger or you know ventilation enabler something like that. You have to provide a unique ID and you can just type any number or you can use this uuidgenerator.net and it's going to give you a unique ID. And the rest of it should be like this. So it's a switch, it's a um, uh, the capabilities is uh, device status and then you can fill out the rest. Um, it is, this manufacturer model firmware version is not really uh, um, important you can just put anything that you want here and then you need the service ip that's going to be the ip of your ihost and then you can leave the additional info and the device initial state as uh, um, empty uh, objects so empty curly brackets so that is going to create your uh, switch and when you execute it for the first time you will see that this fan switch will get created so that's uh, this will just appear here as a new device and next we are going to create this history this value so um, I use the value of one uh, so you just put the you know whatever value so that's the temperature difference and then it gets stored in a flow variable so we just stored it in a variable so we can use it later and then next we need to read the to-do sensors that we are going to use temperature sensors so for that I'm using this uh, node which is called even state and um, uh, the server is going to be your iHost and the device is going to be, you know, whatever device that you need. So you can see that I have two temperature sensors. So one of them is the old um, Zigbee temperature sensor. And this one is the new Zigbee temperature sensor. Well, I mean, it's a temperature sensor. But as you can see, you can use the TH Elite or I think I have a T an old TH10 as well somewhere. It should be somewhere here in the list. And, oops, and for each of them, what we're really interested in about is the temperature. So yeah, that's the temperature. And for the other one, it's going to be just a new temperature sensor. And again, we are going to use the temperature. And these two nodes return a JSON, but it's return is a string. So we need this uh, JSON node to convert it. And then again, as I said, we are going to store these values. And I'm just going to enable these uh, debug nodes so we can see how it looks like. And um, these temperature sensor, or sorry, these sensors are going to send the temperature in the message dot payload dot payload dot temperature dot temperature. Don't ask me why they have created this complicated structure, but uh, that's how Sonoff uh, created the data model, so we just have to use it. So that's not something that you need to change. What is um, What you can change is what's going to be the name of the variable that we are going to use. So let's say my old temperature sensor is my outside temperature and my new temperature sensor is my inside temperature. So you can see the other one is get saved in the inside value. And again, the uh, the value that comes from the sensor is in message.payload.payload.temperature.temperature. 
Do we have a... No, we don't have any live data yet. Oh, no, do we do? So you can see I also have it in the debug. So you can see that that's the data which comes from one of the temperature sensor. By the way, a, the, each of them send the same structure. So you can see it has an endpoint, which has stuff that we don't care about. It has a payload and under it there is a temperature and there is a temperature and it says 25.1. So that's, that's the value that we are going to save. And if you go into the context data, and if you go here, you can see the two temperatures. So inside temperature and the outside temperature, we have the hysteresis, and we also have this fan state, which is coming from here. So here I'm getting the on-off action or the on-off state of my fan switch, and again, converting it to JSON uh, and saving it in the fan state, So which is in uh, message.payload.payload.power.power state. So that contains on and off depending on whether this is on or off. So these are all the states and everything that we, you know, the, te the, the temperature values and the states that we store. And now whenever we get either an update on the outside or the inside temperature, I created this, uh, these two wires that go to this switch and these uh, basically just say what is my current fan state. So is the fan on or otherwise, let's say, off. And then uh, we are going to, you know, look at the temperatures and decide whether the fan needs to be turned off or on, depending on whether it's on or off. So if the fan is on, then that's the flow that we need to follow. And then we need to check whether the uh, it's uh, too warm outside. Because if it's too warm outside, let's say if it's a, like a greenhouse and we don't. We only want the cool air to be circulated into the uh, greenhouse. Then we need to turn the fan off. So what I did, I created this switch node, which is running an expression, and this expression says, "Flow context outside is greater than the flow context inside." So basically, what it does, it checks whether the outside value is greater than the inside value. And if this is true, then it only it, that, that's the only case is going to forward the message. So if the fan is on and my outside temperature is warmer than the inside temperature, then I want to turn off the fan. So you can see that uh, turn off the fan, fan and off. But if it's not, if the fan is off, then we need to check if uh, the outside temperature is colder. So let's say I'm going to check the inside temperature and I'm going to add the hysteresis. And if it's greater than the outside temperature, then we start the, uh, uh, start the fan. And I decided to add this hysteresis only to this condition. You can, you can give it, uh, put it to both of the conditions. It's, it really depends on you. I just wanted to give you this concept that you, instead of just comparing the two temperatures, you also add a little bit of delta value. Otherwise, as I said, your fan may just keep turning on and off uh, too frequently. So if, let's say, um, the temperature is 25 degrees inside, it's only going to turn off if the inside temperature is one degree higher than the outside temperature. Because otherwise, let's say uh, the temperatures are very close, so it doesn't worth running the fan. And again, on this expression, so whenever you want to use any of these flow variables, then you just uh, put dollar sign flow context and in brackets and double quotes, you give the name of the, your variable. And these are the names that we have defined here. So flow dot something, which is here, and then you refer to these as flow context, brackets, double quotes, and the name. And um, actually, I'm not sure if it's case sensitive, just um, so you make sure that you use the same case. So, and if it's too warm inside, then we are going to turn the fan on. So again, um, on the iHost, uh, we are going to operate a switch, which is the fan switch, and we are going to turn it on. And of course, um, in order to use this control device node and in order to be able to select the fan switch, you have to make sure that this part of the flow is uh, created and it's deployed because that's the only time when it's actually going to create this fan switch. And that's it. So 
temperatures are coming in, the temperatures are getting stored, and then it evaluates the fan, the current fan state, and based on that, it's going to check whether the, uh, the conditions to turn the fan either on and off are true, and then it's going to turn the fan on and off. And um, as I said, this is only going to execute, so this part of the flow is only going to execute when a reading is received, and these ZigBee sensors usually only send readings when the temperature changes by I think like 0.5 degrees or something like that. So it's not going to be, you know, constantly switching on and off anyway. But with the hysteresis, I think it's going to be more like, uh, 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 like a reasonable amount of switching or changes. So let me show you how it works. So what I can do. Okay, so I put the um, the iHost screen and the Node Red screen side by side, so we can see what is happening, especially with these, uh, actually with the fan switch. And um, so at the moment, uh, I just heated up the outside sensor a little bit, so the uh, the fan has turned off. So let's um, simulate the um, uh, the case where the temperature inside the greenhouse gets too warm. So I'm just holding my outside sensor and I'm just going to put it into my hand so it, it warms up. And by the way, if you want to see how this refreshes, then you have to you know click on this refresh button from time to time. But we can see the temperatures here as well. So this is my new sensor and I'm expecting this temperature value to rise. And then if we are going to see the uh, uh, the one degree difference, then uh, the fan should turn on. And I almost missed this. So now what you can see that the inside temperature is 27 degrees and the outside temperature is 26. And then what we said is that uh, if the inside temperature plus one is greater than the outside temperature, then the fan turns on. And actually now I realize that maybe I should have added the plus one hysteresis to the other conditions, but Again, well, this is just an example, so you can change it the way you want it. So now there, this uh, sensor now is pretty warm. Actually, it's going up even more. So now the fan is just going to give, uh, be turned on all the time because then uh, now this condition that's, that is too warm inside, that condition is already true. So now the execution is going to check the condition when it's getting too warm outside to turn off the fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other sensor, I'm going to put in my hand again, and we want to warm this temperature reading. So now uh, we just have to wait for probably about a minute for this to turn to heat up. Of course, the other one should really cool down, but uh, again, that's going to take some time as well. And here in this example, I'm using the, the temperature, but of, of course you can use the humidity as well. Uh, well, especially with these readings, which has temperature and humidity. And of course, if you would want to do this, then uh, for these, you have to check the, uh, sorry, change the temperature to humidity. And also in these, um, uh, change nodes, the value is going to be payload.payload. Payload. I think I have to check this, but humidity.humidity .humidity instead of temperature, that's temperature.temperature. Dot temperature. So now we can see that, oh, it's already happened. So the out, outside temperature is now warmer than the inside temperature. So we have turned off the fan. It's just 0.1 degree, but you know, it's warmer. So the fan has turned off. So you can see it here, it's off, and then the switch is off as well. And now I can just uh, take the, the other sensor again in my hand, and if I just uh, warm it up, and now it's warmer again. So you can see how it works, and uh, I can get this uh, logic to work you know, fairly quickly. But uh, in a normal circumstances where these are measuring ambient temperatures, of course, the temperature is not going to change that quickly. So the updates from the sensors are going to happen much uh, less frequently. Your device is not going to switch on and off so frequently. But I think uh, this is what we would want. So I think that's one more application where I think the node red is really, really useful to complement some of the functionality which is not available in the scene on of the iHost. If you have other automation cases that you want to do in the iHost but you are not able to do in the scenes, well, just let me know in the comment section because most probably there is a solution for that in Node-RED. 
but I think that will be all for today. As I mentioned, if you want this flow, the link is going to be down in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.